Today's gospel reading is Luke chapter 19, verses 29 to 44. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it, just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. Now as he was approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. As he came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you, even you, had only recognized on this day that the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set us ramparts around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Who is going to pray for the preacher today? Anybody? I will. Thank you, Miss Toby. Lord, as we gather today, knowing that this coming week is the most important week almost in the year, a little bit equal to Christmas, but we need a strong leader and we need to be able to discern what it is that you have for us to do. So we pray today that you bless Pastor Terry with health and with strength so that she can help us get through what can be quite difficult for many people and may we come out on the other side with a better understanding of what you would have for our life and for what we want, would do in your name most of all we pray that you will be with all of us as we follow pastor terry as she leads through your name in jesus name amen amen hey santa ho santa 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 ho Santa, hey, Santa, ho, Santa. Hey, JC, JC, you're all right with me. Santa, ho, Santa, hey, superstar. Anybody my age knows that one, right? What was that from? Jesus Christ, superstar. Now, that was a big scandal back when that came out. Boy, oh boy. We were told in my little church, Frames Memorial up the road, we will not sing any of that hippie music in this congregation. <laughs> that and Godspell are two of the pieces of music that brought a lot of people from my generation to Jesus Christ. And just a few years ago, I was pleased to see it presented on NBC, and guess who played Pontius Pilate? Alice Cooper, which is just another weird thing. <laughs> if you're my age, you'll know what I mean. But I love that song because what <coughs> Alice Cooper sang to Jesus who was, I think, John Legend, wasn't it? Was Jesus in that one? And um, what a powerful voice he has. But the, the song says, why don't you stop moaning at the crowd? And Jesus says, nothing can be stopped to, done to stop their shouting. If their voices were still, the stones themselves would start to sing. And then they all sing, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna again. Um, the stones would sing if the people were quiet. Trouble is, we're God's people, aren't we? We're too quiet oftentimes. We're too quiet about what we believe to keep it to ourselves. We don't want to be one of those pushy religious types. We don't want to be one of those holy rollers. We don't want to be one of those crazy people who talks about our faith. 
but we're called to live our faith. So how do we do that in this day and age? Sad, isn't it? I don't know if you saw the New York Times post that was out this week that talked about, they did a survey of Americans about the things we value. You know how many Americans value worshiping in a church anymore? We're down to 38%. 38% of Americans see any value in that at all. Americans no longer value patriotism or honesty, things that were part of the core of who we used to be. But I don't want us to be discouraged. I want us to be challenged by these things. Don't be discouraged by it because Jesus Christ, who was, is, and is to come, was still with us here. Before he ascends into heaven in Matthew's gospel, we call the Great Commission. What does he say to them? I will be with you how long? Always. I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. So Christ is here. Why are we so sad? Why do we wring our hands and say, oh, the world's going to hell in a handbasket? One of my mother's caretakers is always saying to me, Pastor, you know the devil's at work in the world. Well, the devil's been at work in the world for a long time now. And says to me, we're in the end times, aren't we, Pastor? And I said, I don't know. And she said, well, it's obvious we're in the end times. No, it's not. Jesus said to his disciples, nobody knows. Only the Father in heaven. I don't even know that. So we could either sit on our hands or throw them up in the air or ring them and say, what do we do, what do we do, what do we do, or we can trust God and live as God's people. That's what's going to change the world. I tried to give you some tools this year during Lent for getting closer to God. Remember last week the kids drew that lovely mountain where the closer you get to God, the closer you get to each other? What were some of the things, the spiritual practices we talked about this Lent? Here is not your Bible quiz du jour. Here is your do I remember what happened three weeks ago quiz. What were some of the things we talked about, the spiritual practices of Lent? Anybody remember anything we talked about? I have a praise for the preacher next week, and I have to pray that she makes enough sense that people remember what she says. We prayed for disciplines in almsgiving, service. We talked about fasting. We talked about sacrificing things, sacrifice, and what else did we talk about? Solitude spending time with God, Sabbath, all those things. We've gotten away from those practices, haven't we, in the church today? And if we are to be God's people in the world, if we're supposed to be this powerful force for Jesus, which I believe we can be, we've got to get back to the basics of our faith. We've got to get back to serving one another, because that's how we serve God, by serving God's people. You will serve God very well if you go out to the store and you buy a pack of kitty underwear or socks and bring it to church next Sunday. You will serve God if you remember to bring something for the food pantry every week or once a month or whenever you can afford to buy an extra canned good in the store. You will, you will be able to serve God that way. You'll serve God if you work here in the congregation teaching Sunday school, teaching these little guys about your faith. Because what teaches them faith is to look at you. Not what you say, what you do. When you're kind and loving and gentle with them. They know that and they remember that their whole lives. We talked about spending time with God alone. Jesus going up the mountain so that he could come down and serve people. He had to spend time alone with his God, with his Father in prayer and in deep and close proximity with his Father without the distractions of the world around him. We talked about the Sabbath, reclaiming Sabbath as part of our lives doesn't mean this. I'm not saying this to say you got to come to church every Sunday. I'm saying you have to have some time with God that lets you rest. Because what happens when we don't rest? We get cranky. We get sick. We get really, really depleted in our bodies and in our souls and in our spirits as well. So if we do these things, not just during Lent, but make them part of our lives every day, we will get closer to God and we will feel God and we will live God in the world used to be that Palm Sunday was the beginning of Holy Week. Now people come to church, they come to church on Palm Sunday, they'll wave their palm branches, they'll go home, they'll forget about Thursday, they'll forget about Friday, and then on Sunday they will come and say hallelujah. But if we don't stop between the 
Hosanna the hallelujah, look at what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. We missed the point, Holy Week. Lambert said something interesting to me in the last couple of days. He said, before he worked on the staff in church, he used to think Christmas was the busy time. Now he knows that Holy Week is the busy time. That's why we have these services, to give you an opportunity to understand the depth of God's love for you in Jesus Christ. So whether you're here or at home, take time this week Look at our website, look at our Facebook page. We've given something for you to do every day this week to reflect on the last words Jesus spoke from the cross, beginning with, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing, down to, into your hands I commit my spirit. Every day, meditate on those words, and you will know the depth of God's love for you in Jesus Christ. But one of the best ways we have to know God is through the sacrament of God's love for us. I say this when I celebrate communion. I don't do the full liturgy of the church most Sundays. But one thing that always strikes me when I take communion, which is why it is so special to me now, is knowing full well that they were about to deny him, desert him, and betray him. Jesus takes bread and says, here I am. Here I am. Before they've even had a chance to sin, his forgiveness covers them. He knows who we are. He knows what we've done. He knows what we're going to do next. He knows what we've forgotten to do. He knows what we've neglected to do. He knows what we have intentionally done to someone else. And still he says, here I am for you. This is all for you. So my prayer for you as you enter this holy week, this holiest week of our year, is that you will know that God is saying, here I am. Here I am for you, for you, for you, for you, for you, for each of you. Here I am. Take and eat. As often as you do this in remembrance of me. So in a few moments we're going to come forward and I hope you will understand the depth of God's love that is in this cup. That is in this piece of bread for you. That you will eat with a glad and grateful heart and that you will go forth singing. Singing the praise of your God, your Savior, Jesus Christ, so that the stones don't have to take up your part. Amen. Amen. Amen.